Alrighty, welcome back to the channel guys and girls. We are here, it's a thrift store day. These people start to pile in. I think that's an employee. Maybe looking at bikes? Huh. Maybe looking at bikes. So it should be a fun day. It's uh, it's finally fall. It's definitely chilly out. This morning it was 36 degrees, took out salsa. When it's cold out, she just goes straight to the bathroom and she wants to run back inside, which is which is nice. And uh, we are here, we're thrifting. Scran, Wilkesbury area, should be fun. Hoping to pick up a lot of stuff. I don't need more inventory. I have tons of inventory, but I am still very, very depleted in things that have sold in terms of inventory left over. So it should be fun. Let's get into it and let's see what we can find today. Let's do it. These are some funky baseball pants. Uh, sweatshirt season depleted. There's nothing here. I mean, you put these together, just that's your sweatshirts. Uh, so I think I'm going to thrift store number two. I didn't find one thing here, so onward. All right, at the second store, um, got a lot here. Couldn't find a shopping cart. That's kind of my problem right now, so I need a shopping cart. What is this? No idea. But without a shopping cart, I'm like dragging clothes all over the ground. I can't really look at my clothes either. So I like to check if there's any stains. So I'm like to find a spot and just throw them up somewhere. Here we find sweatshirts hiding in the long sleeve shirt section. Actually found a lot of good stuff. I found a hockey jersey, which is something I find maybe once every eight or ten months. So I'll show that at the end. I don't know if it's actually like a professional player or if it's a custom jersey because I've never heard of the guy. What is this? Robin Ruth. Never heard of that brand. Robin Ruth. Hmm. I need to find a shopping cart. That's, that's what I need right now. Got a whole cart in here. Golf balls, eight bucks. I don't know if Nike, PD, if these are like expensive golf balls. I know, I think Nike doesn't make golf balls anymore, so that might be a collector's item someday. You got one metal truck down here, but he's seven dollars. Nylon. Got some reefs, some cars and packages. Found a shopping cart as well, which is nice. Something I well needed. All right, very fortunate for myself. I did catch this mistake on this hockey jersey, which looks like the Florida Panthers. And if you just look at it, you'll be like, oh, it's the Florida Panthers. It's Florida Junior Panthers. Um, so that's not gonna work because this player never played for the Florida Panthers. He played for the Florida Junior Panthers, which I don't even know what that is. I don't know if that's like a rec league or, you know, an affiliation somehow, but uh, I'm putting this back because no one's going to want it since it's not an actual professional hockey team. Now, if you had a jersey that was like of a guy who didn't play for a while, this, that, that's something different. You know, you're talking maybe a $20, $25 jersey. If he still plays for the team, you're talking maybe $50 to $100. If he's uh, someone who's like a legend of the team, you're definitely talking anywhere from between like $50 to $100. But junior hockey, junior teams just are not it for me. It's something that probably would not sell at all. So it's getting put back. This is very important to go back and really check what you have because some like this you'd be like wow that's really nice it's high quality this that but I'm just not gonna work all right you guys see a rack is right there they just put out 
two new items that I found. I got this nice, it's kind of like a Kuji or a Kugi inspired sweater. The last one I had, I think it sold for like 40 bucks. It's not Kuji or whatever the name brand is called. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's that same um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air style. And then also, check out that nice 96 Kiss t shirt for three bucks. Vintage Kiss t shirt and a Kuji inspired sweater. So that's probably 70 or 80 bucks in those two shirts right there. You never know. It pays to stick around, I guess. I'm going to have to go back there and take one last gander. There was a Penn State sweatshirt, but it was Penn State crew. Like, crew, I guess, like rowing crew. And I just don't need individual sports, but it pays to stick around, definitely. <laughs> now that I have buyers for antique furniture, I would grab this, but it's 50 bucks. And furniture's not half off or anything, so that's not gonna work. This doesn't even have a price tag on it. They have a dresser over here that's been here for probably three months. It's this one over here. I don't know if they reduced the price. I don't even see the price on it. This was 110 the first time I came here. That's really nice. Doesn't have a price on it anymore. All right, to kind of wrap it up here, do a little quick recap my two favorite finds. Well, actually, I got a bunch of favorite finds. I did want to talk about this. Uh, like I said earlier, this is that Kuji inspired or Kugi, I don't really know how to say it. Uh, sweater. These are also known as Fresh Prince of Bel Air sweaters. This would go with it. These sweaters still sell very, very well. And although this isn't the authentic brand of that kind of style of sweater, these still sell. All right, there's like three or four other brands I've seen that sell very, very similar styles just like this. And they all fetch anywhere between like 30 bucks to 80 bucks. You guys might remember a rummage sale I think I picked up in the spring. I found one of these sweaters. I think I ended up selling it for about $45 or $50. It also was not that authentic Kuji uh, brand. So even if it's not that brand, this one doesn't even have a tag, but does have the, uh, the size, which is good. Uh, still pick them up because you're still going to make money and they still do sell. It, it is a certain like abstract design that a lot of people are after. And lastly, I picked up this vintage early 90s Boston Celtics sweater. And what I want to talk about this is there is a whiteout stain, that or paint. So a lot of people, whenever they used to do painting, like paint their house, they used to just throw on a sweater that they were going to toss away anyway. Uh, most likely was the case with this. Probably like in the early, 2000, early 2000s, they were like, I'm never going to wear that sweater again. They changed their design. They changed their logo. That's, that sweatshirt is just something they're not going to, you know, it's not going to be anything of value. And that eventually ends up getting donated. With something like this, you can always Sharpie it out. Now, that does not mean sit there and say, hey, the sweatshirt doesn't have any stains, doesn't have any problems. But if you Sharpie it out and get rid of the white, it blends in with a black and then you still have to, I'm telling you right now, you still have to say there is a stain on it. Um, say that something was sharpied out or a spot was sharpied out. And the reason why I say that is because don't lie to people. Don't tell someone that, hey, look, it's mint because, you know, you put black Sharpie on a black sweatshirt over a spot and you think you get rid of it because you don't. Uh, but somebody's most likely going to buy something if there is a dark spot on a dark sweatshirt as opposed to a large white spot on a dark sweatshirt. Do not stick away. Do not stay away from the obviously, you know, if the whole sweatshirt's covered in paint, I wouldn't even bother with it. Or I would buy it and just leave it as it is. It's kind of, you know, abstract, I guess you can call it in its own way. But for something small, it's not a problem to kind of try to get rid of that spot by trying to blend it in. Uh, just make sure you guys also say that there is still some damage to the sweatshirt. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been a fun pick. And uh, if you did, subscribe for future thrifting videos. Until next time, have a great day. Keep living the dream. Peace.